Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening, good morning to wherever you're at in the world. This is day two of E3 2015. If you're just joining me now, what we normally do here is cover, give everybody a recap that didn't get a chance to watch E3 2015 because they're busy at work, they have things to do for school, or they're just generally not able to be here. And that's okay. Uh, guys like me, I know there's a couple other channels that are doing it. We go ahead out there and cover everything and give you a review and a recap. No bullshit in between, no little talk show about some crap you don't care about, just the straight up facts from each conference. Today we did Microsoft first thing in the afternoon, so around 12 o'clock, and I tuned in a little bit later because I wasn't able to get there. So I might be missing a couple things. Uh, half an hour is, is a little bit of time and a pretty big gap for me to cover and I wasn't able to get on because of internet connectivity issues, so sorry about that. From what I hear, Halo 5 and Star Wars Battlefront both got their uh, debuts on Microsoft first. And I tuned in around the time that uh, Phil Spencer was out there talking about games and doing his bullshit spiel as he normally does. And as soon as he got done with that, he announced that the Xbox 360 games would be able to be played on an Xbox One. That's right backwards compatibility for Xbox One. That it's a huge fucking leap uh, towards where they're supposed to go as compared to two years ago at E3 where they implemented all these DRM policies and other garbage that didn't need to be there. So they listened to their fans and went ahead and got about 100 360 titles and they're going to make them backwards compatible so you can play them on your Xbox One. And the uh, real jab at Sony was, we're not going to make you buy games that you already have. Understandable. However, I guarantee you that tonight there's going to be a throwdown at Camp Sony. <laughs> as soon as they got done with that announcement, they moved to n another piece of new hardware, the Xbox Elite controller. Now, normally I'm not a fan of the Xbox One controller because it's just, it's big, it's bulky, it's annoying, and... I just don't like the way the two back triggers are. They're just not comfortable enough for me to hold my hand. Um, I guess they fixed this issue, and they also added this really weird-looking hexagon-type D-pad so you can rock back and forth and stuff with your thumb. It has four back triggers on it. So what they did, they basically just added onto the controller. They didn't actually change the fundamental design of it. They um, put four different paddles on the back of it, a bunch of buttons and switches and you could change the thumbsticks and stuff. I mean, it's crazy. It is. I wouldn't expect that from Microsoft, but I guarantee you that it's going to be a high-priced controller when it hits stores because it's called Elite. Understandable. Probably 150 bucks. A little bit more than people are willing to spend on controllers enough as it is right now. Right after that, Fallout 4, the Scott guy came out on stage and uh, he's talking about Fallout 4 and um... He said that um, it's going to support mods from PC. So if you make a mod on the PC for Fallout 4, you can transfer it from there to your Xbox One. And that's pretty fucking cool. I like that. That's a great idea. Uh, Cross-platform playability. Great job on that one. And then EA came out with their bullshit and their EA access. and Nobody cares, man. It's a paid subscription service. You guys got to understand, it's actually cheaper to go out and buy a physical copy of the game than it is to subscribe to EA's bullshit every year. Don't buy into it. Just buy the game. It's cheaper in the long run. And you don't have to hear these buttholes spill out all this garbage about how they're for the player. They're not for the player. EA has never been for the player. Just the money. So that little segment there really irritated the crap out of me. They shouldn't have been up there in the first place. And then uh, you can register for free for a free trial at E3. So if you have an Xbox One at home and you want to try out EA Access, be my guess, go for it. It's only free until the end of E3 and then you're going to get charged for subscription if you do download the games that are there. They give you a full access to the library so you download the game and then you can't play it after E3 is over so you have to subscribe. Bold move EA but also a bullshit move. I don't buy into stuff like that. Uh, right after that, we got into Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare. It got its premiere on Xbox One first. And uh, there's not much to say about that. It's the same game. They just added some uh, single-player campaign stuff and um, 
added a new storyline to it. Uh, after that, there was this really, really cool introduction about the Ford, Ford GT. And it, the new Ford GT dropped down from the top of the ceiling. I love the way they did it. It was really cool to watch. It dropped down from the ceiling, and then there was a Forza 6 on the background. Looking really good. The gameplay was amazing, man. I got Gran Turismo 6 right now, and it's on par with GT6 right now. If not a little bit over because of all the customization stuff you can do as compared to GT6 where you're limited uh, to what you can do with the uh, car itself. So yeah, they did a really good job introducing Forza 6, really good looking game. Uh, 450 different cars you can customize, full interiors, exteriors, you can mess with the motors, you know, normal Forza stuff. Then right after that, they did a trailer for Dark Souls 3. Not much to say about it, there wasn't any gameplay, just a trailer, CGI animated. And there wasn't much to say about that either because it was just random screenshots of different areas in the game. Um, Tom Clancy, right after that, they did the Tom Clancy's uh, Division. The game looks really good. A CGI trailer. We saw gameplay from last year. Of course, CGI this year. Hype up the game a little bit. Pe get people interested for the holiday season. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege. They... Um, stated that if you buy the Division, the Siege will be included with the Division, so you get a game for free, and there's another one that you get for free too, on top of the um, 360 compatibility. So those are one of the games that will be compatible with the Xbox One from the 360, is the uh, Tom Clancy Rainbow Six. Uh, I think it was Vegas, Rainbow Six Vegas. Um, right after that, they started doing their promotions for their new OS. Windows 10 this, Windows 10 that. They just integrated it with the, the conference. And I cannot stress enough how bad of an idea that is. I've sat through conferences at Microsoft before where they talked about their phones and their tablets for like a half an hour. That's a lot of time to talk about something nobody gives a fuck about. Nobody cares about that shit. So what? I can connect my phone or my tablet to a, a console. It doesn't matter. I'm never going to use those features. You guys have to get that through your damn heads. You're smarter than that. Um, as soon as they got done with the promoting crap, they went to the Gigantic, this new game where you choose your hero and uh, one of those fantas fantasy cartoony type worlds and everything's made up. It looks okay. I really didn't care for it. That's when things got interesting right after that. They came out on stage with all these indie games. They were just everywhere, one right after the other. They were so fast that I couldn't write them down in time. Boom, 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 like right in your face. And then they started bringing developers out. Uh, there was a lot of them. There was four, I believe. There was Tacoma. Ashen is going to be an exclusive. Uh, shout out to Ashens from uh, England there. And right after that, there was Beyond Eyes, where you have to play as this blind kid, and you have to see or, see the world around you without using sight. Pretty neat. Uh, I like the idea. And there was Cuphead, which looks very interesting. It's a world centered in the 1930s cartoon world. So Popeye, the Sailor Man type cartoon uh, style. That, that's really cool. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more gameplay from it, actually. Interesting uh, take on things from that studio. Uh, we have the Xbox game preview thing, which was a real fuck up again, guys. You, you can't keep doing this. This isn't a PC, this is a console. This game preview thing would essentially allow you, the gamer, to go ahead and um, purchase a demo or a beta or something. Uh, say the game's in an alpha, and you want to try it. Well, they give you a trial version, which no doubt is going to be very short, and then you can buy the alpha. Now, the problem I have with this is it's just like Kickstarter. If the game is funded, and the game's there, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get the green light from that certain company to go ahead and get shipped out, or produced, or put on a store market for you to purchase. You're basically purchasing a game that isn't even there. And that's bullshit. Fucking no. I'm sorry. If you want to do that shit, go to Steam. 
That's why it's there. Don't fucking bring it to consoles. Because you're just going to piss a lot of people off. Right after that, they got to DayZ and the creator of DayZ from the PC DayZ came up with a game called Ion. It's for the Xbox One, Xbox One exclusive, yada yada. Ion, set in space, CGI trailer, nothing much after that. I mean, there was very little gameplay as, as far as it, uh, the conference goes so far. And then they finally got out of the indie thing. Now, the indie game display was pretty cool. I enjoyed the way that they brought all the independent developers out on stage and had them display their games and talk about their beginnings and uh, what they were doing and you know it was interesting but as far as the game preview thing goes I'm sorry you just don't do that shit it's it's not good not good for business then they got into the exclusive stuff rise of the tomb raider finally got a chance to see some great gameplay even though it was pre-rendered I got a chance to see some I am very impressed by the visual graphics and I believe I have um, no, I don't have any any of that footage. I'm sorry about that. I did get a chance to get some footage because my internet connection kept cutting out here and there. So I was only able to see so much here and there. Uh, right after Tomb Raider, there was Rare Replay. So instead of you going out and spending $90 on, uh, what is it, Conker's Bad Fur Day, you can spend 30 bucks, get 30 games from Rare, and be able to play it on your Xbox One. Great idea, it'll drive the price of N64 games down a little bit. It'll also drive the price of uh, SNES and uh, original Xbox games down a bit. Good idea, definitely good idea. Uh, August 4th, 2015 is the release date. Uh, you get Perfect Dark, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Banjo-Kazooie, um, a couple other games. I can't remember what Rare produced at this moment, it's kind of slipping my mind. Exclusive from Rare came at a very good time. So as soon as they brought out that uh, Rare 30 for 30 deal, uh, they went into this new thing called uh, Son of Thieves, I believe. Yeah, the Son of Thieves, it's this pirate game, and you go ahead and pilot a ship, you're a pirate on the seas. Really great idea. Everybody loved the idea of Assassin's Creed Black Flag where you're a pirate, you go around and blowing up other people's ships. These guys took it a step further and made a whole game out of it. So kudos to them for that. Xbox One, Oculus Rift, uh, streaming, stuff like that. They're gonna try and make the Oculus Rift work with the Xbox One controllers, so it's going to be exclusive to the Oculus Rift. VR gaming is coming along very nicely, but I don't think it's ready to move out of the realm of touch controls and into controllers just yet and I think everybody's taking this in the wrong direction as in they're trying to make everything come to life around you instead of transporting you into the game so I'm gonna have to see if uh, Project Morpheus is any different but they also have Microsoft HoloLens which gives you that feel of you put the headset on and then everything around you is uh, a, a game you could put anything on the on the screen that you want uh, they did a minecraft example this year I don't care for minecraft I think it's a horrible game but they put it on the wall and then all of a sudden he says go ahead and create table and it goes on the this table it creates the level on the table and it builds itself and it was really cool to watch really enjoyed that he looked down you could look up and help the player out and do all this different stuff here and there Excuse me. Really, really neat. Uh, right after that, they got into promoting their tablets uh, alongside their little Minecraft Oculus Rift uh, HoloLens type thing. Guys, again with the tablet stuff. You can't keep mentioning this shit. People don't care. People aren't going to go out and spend $1,000 on a tablet with a fucking keyboard attached to it. They buy a laptop if you're spending that much. You get double the computing power and you don't have to worry about taking a touch screen apart, which is good news. After that, it was Gears of War and they come out with the ultimate definitive, I think it was the ultimate edition or something like that. Nobody really cared, it's just an HD version of the original Gears. However, right after that, we have a nice little CGI 
gameplay run through of Gears of War 4. That's right, Gears of War 4 will be coming out soon. Uh, they're planning on a 2015 release. It'll, it'll probably get pushed back like all games do, but I'm hopeful for that. And I do believe I have some footage of that, so you guys will be able to see that right here, right now on my channel. Looks like it went this way. Come on. Hey, wind's picking up. No need to worry just yet. And watch it. That thing could be anywhere.
not the hunters anymore. Let's just clear this courtyard. There! Come on! Through the door! Yeah, go on! So that was a very interesting display there. Uh, Gears of War, <laughs> looking really, really good. Enjoyed it. Uh, I'm not really that big of a Gears fan, but this kind of piqued my interest. Uh, really got me going. Got your heart thumping when that big ass monster come, came down and came after you. Really good job displaying the game and its graphics and capabilities. They ended the show with something that wasn't about, about Xbox One, it was about their new operating system. Now I understand that you're trying to launch a new operating system, but seeing as, as how uh, the last one was a failure, I don't think that this would have been the place to put that. Microsoft Windows 10 will be launched on July 29th, 2015, but nobody really cares. People are still using Windows 7 because they got it right with that one, and 8 is a piece of shit, it's garbage, with them stupid retard tiles that you have to go through. So nobody uses 8, and unless they fixed everything from 8 to 10, nobody's gonna buy 10. We'll have to see how everything plays out, but again, this is definitely not the place to put your fucking software and hardware from your separate companies into E3. You just don't do it. You don't see Nintendo doing that shit. You don't see Sony doing that shit. Why the fuck are you doing it? It's not the time or place for it. You guys gotta learn. Other than that, Microsoft fucking nailed their conference this year. Fucking nailed it. Exactly what I wanted to happen this year. Last year was a disgrace. They were trying to play catch up 24-7. It was just crazy how many 1-80s I seen them do throughout the year. And now that they finally gained a little bit of trust from the consumers, they're taking that and they're running with it. They're running like crazy through the fields. And I'm very glad that they finally woke up and see what, seen what was uh, ahead of them. And that they need to get their heads out of their asses and fucking use their heads for once. Great job. You fucking did it. So um, right after this, we're going to be getting into the EA conference. And there's a lot to cover there. I guarantee you sports will be the number one topic, but I also see Mirror's Edge stuff and also um, Star Wars Battlefront stuff. So I'm looking forward to the EA conference and we'll see you guys here in just a little bit. L rules out.